Welcome everyone to the Nationwide Prayer Campaign to End Abortion Forever. We're back again and today is the Great Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, the day from which St. Faustina received the Divine Mercy Chaplet and we exalt the cross up to the Father every Mass. So let's uh, give him praise and thanksgiving and we will have Brother Bob Canton doing do a healing service and a teaching afterwards after the prayers. So God bless you and let's get started. Hi, Brother Bob, how are you? Great, Karen, how are you? Good, thank you. I wanted to um, read a testimony before you start um, the prayers. Is that okay? I mean the teaching. Sure. Okay. Sure. I have one testimony that um, was given, and there's many. This is just one of them. I will read it to you. Personal healing testimony. My husband, Willie, wait, let me just make sure that everybody could hear. Okay. Um, my husband, Willie, and I were positive for COVID-19 on May 19th, 2020. The next day, my husband was feeling quite sick. His temperature was 100.5. He had muscle pains. He was coughing and his oxygen saturation had only registered 85% in the pulse oximeter. I called our primary care physician and told her that I had to bring my husband to the ER. He was admitted into the hospital and was put on oxygen at two liters per nasal cannula. In just six hours, he required to have 10 liters. The next day, the nurse called me and told me he needed more oxygen. As a result, he was put on high flow oxygen. My condition was a little bit better than my husband's. My symptoms were mild and I had to quarantine myself for 14 days as a result of the COVID-19. I was retested negative of COVID-19. Early morning of May 23rd, 2020, I received a call from the pulmonologist and he informed me that my husband had to be intubated and had to be transferred to the ICU because he said, your husband was in a very critical was in a very critical condition. I am a registered nurse and I've been witnessing multiple COVID-19 patients die on a daily basis. I never thought that I would be confronted by COVID-19 crisis on a personal face-to-face -face basis, so to speak. I cried and prayed every day. Instead of questioning God why it was happening to me and my husband, I asked God for his mercy, compassion, and his healing power. I called my first cousin, Robert Canton, who lives in California with his family, whom I haven't seen and spoken with for a long time since the death of my aunt Lily, Robert's mom, in 2013, when I went to Stockton, California. I told him about my husband's situation and that he needed prayers bad. Immediately, Robert responded, and on that very moment we prayed together, Robert assured me that everything would be okay. And he was encouraged to trust in the Lord, encouraged me to trust in the Lord because he will never abandon us. I was given a special privilege to visit my husband in the ICU, and every time I visited him, I called Robert afterwards and gave him updates on my husband's condition. Every time he calls, which was almost daily, he prayed for my husband and me. On July 19, 2020, the nurse called me to inform me that my husband was not doing well. His blood pressure was low, his heart rate was so high, and his temperature was 105, and he needed more oxygen. I spent the whole night talking to God. I told God that even in my darkest time, in my sorrow and pains, I would still lift up my hands in praise to him, and I constantly reminded him of his promises not to abandon us, as Robert always reminded me of. The following day, my cousin Robert called me, and we prayed again over the phone. On July 2020, 
As I was on my way to the hospital, I was crying and praying to God and reminded him again of his promise to heal my husband, Willie. On that same day, a powerful moment of healing happened before my eyes. I saw my husband very much awake and was off the ventilator. Miracles continued to unfold every day. Slowly but surely, he was able to recognize people. He was able to eat, able to breathe on his own, and able to talk. And first words that came out of his, my husband's mouth was, the Lord talked to me, and he told me that he will heal me, and he will heal you, and that he will never abandon us. On August 25th, 2020, my husband was finally discharged after being confined for three months and five days in the hospital. My husband still slowly gaining strength every day and recovering beautifully from all the ill effects of COVID-19. Jesus in his mercy and compassion for us, may this great miracle happen. I know I will never be able to thank the Lord enough for always being there for us and blessing us and strengthening us in, a, in ways beyond our comprehension. I hope this simple testimony of mine will give encouragement and hope to anyone that with the Lord nothing is impossible at all. Um, Maria Leia Chua RN. So that is beautiful. Praise be Jesus. Yes. And um, there were many other letters that he, uh, Brother Bob Canton sent me of all the testimonies. So um, well, I'm glad to have you back, Brother Bob. And um, um, it, as we all know, Brother Bob is a speaker and he, he's an author and he has he's gifted with healing and miracles and the word of knowledge. So um, I'm gonna give the floor to you, Brother Bob. Um, okay. Um, and just... Yeah, I would like to, uh, you know, today I would like to talk about uh, blockages, some blockages to healing and how to overcome this, these blockages. Now, I've, I've been to, uh, many places all over the world and I could say that I have seen signs and wonders and miracles and healings beyond my imagination. You know, thousands of people come to our healing rallies, healing crusades uh, all over the world. But I would not venture to say that everybody who came received their healings because I believe some of those people, there were some who didn't get their healings. Now, you might wonder why, and same thing, I, I, I wonder why, and because of the, uh, in spite of the fact that many have received their healings. And my brothers and sisters, there are blockages to healing. There are blockages to healing, and there are people who didn't receive their healings because, you know, of maybe of those of those blockages that hinder them from receiving the healings from the Lord. But the will of the Lord is that He wants to heal us. He said in the book of Exodus, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-six. He says, "I am the Lord God, your healer." And uh, he in the book of Psalm one o seven. Uh, the Word of God says, I forgive your sins and heal your diseases. So I would like to mention some of these blockages to healing. Okay, so this is not an, this is not, um, an, an uh, exclusive uh, uh, reasons, but there are, there are some I could only mention some of the blockages to healing uh, so that we will know also and we'll get get, uh, get some ideas on, on how to avoid these blockages to healing. And number one on my list, on uh, based on my experiences and also face-to-face ministering to people all over the world gives me an idea, good ideas 
on on the possible roadblocks to healing. And uh, number one on my uh, list uh, is unforgiveness, hatred, bitterness, and resentments. In the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 25 to 26, Jesus says, when you stand to pray, forgive anyone against whom you have a grievance, so that your heavenly Father may in turn forgive you your transgressions. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 14 to 15, the Lord states, if you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you your transgressions. My, my brothers and sisters, these are words from the Lord himself. That if we don't forgive others, then the Heavenly Father will not also forgive us of all of, of our sins. These are profound words from the Lord. And of course, it's not easy to do. It's not easy to forgive. Many struggle on the issue of forgiveness. However, my, my sisters and brothers, to forgive is actually a matter of the will, you know, and um, it, is, it is a decision that we have to make. <clears throat> it's a conscious decision that we have to make to forgive our, our enemies because unforgiveness, hatred, resentments, and are not only some of the biggest blockages to healing, but they are also blamed by health experts. Yes, they are blamed by health e experts and pinpointed by uh, recent scientific studies. We have made uh, studies recently that uh, they say that the uh, possible causes of some emotional, physical, mental and psychological illnesses are caused by resentments, caused by bitterness and unforgiveness and hatred. No, I I remember one time, you know, back in 2009, I went to um, to Kotonge, South Korea to minister. I was I was a member of the International Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services based in the Vatican. And and during the year we we have international conferences and workshops aside from our meetings in the Vatican. So that year we uh, went to all the ICRIS Council members went to, to Kothani, South Korea to have these workshops. And, and the title of that conference, international conference that year, uh, was Love in Action. So anyway, um, one day, one day, and this was after our workshop, so, uh, we had a day off one day, and so I decided to tour the facilities of the Franciscan uh, congregation in Kotonge, South Korea. They have a big hospital in Kotonge. And um, one day I, I asked Brother Shen, he is a member of the congregation and he is one of the, you know, he is a doctor by the way, is a member of ICRIS uh, uh, representing uh, Southeast Asia, Central Asia. You know, it's a big, big area that he represented in the ICRIS. So I, I asked him, I said, I would like to tour this big hospital. 
And so on our, on our way there, at the entrance of the hospital, we, we met this lady on the wheelchair. And actually there were two ladies there. Um, she was on the wheelchair and one lady was pushing her, her wheelchair for her. So, so uh, Brother Shen introduced me to these ladies and the lady on the wheelchair was uh, her name was Min Siu. So Min Siu was paralyzed, of course, because uh, she was on the wheelchair. And she had um, her, her two hands were kind of stiff. They were pointing to the right, right side of her body. So her feet also, her, her legs were also like pointing to the right side. So um, I asked her, I said, uh, Minx you, what happened to you? And brother Jim Shen was interpreting for me. And um, brother Jim says that uh, Minx you, uh, the cause of her paralysis was that one day when she was maybe a less, less than one year old, she had a fever, she had a high fever. And her parents took her to the acupuncturist. So the acupuncturist had, who had, uh, 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 was using this needle and she poked Minchu on the fontanelle of her skull, the, the soft, soft uh, part of the head. You know, and this um, acupuncture supposed to to heal her of that high fever. So what happened? The, the acupuncturist had pushed this needle too deep, and with such a force that damaged her um, her nerves. So the result was paralysis, paralysis <coughs> on uh, to her body. So anyway, as I was talking to Min Siu, so I asked her, and I said, Min Siu, can I ask you a personal question? And she said, sure. And of course, Brother Jim was interpreting for me. I said, very personal question. Is that OK? And she said, yeah, I don't mind. So I said, have you forgiven the acupuncturist who did this to you? leave you paralyzed for life. And she said, she looked at me and she said, yeah, I have forgiven him a long time ago. I said, really? She said, yeah. And she said further, I did not only forgive him, but I have thanked him for doing that to me, for doing this to me. For I said, really? You thank him? Not only you have forgiven him, but you also have thanked him for, give, for doing this to you? And she said, yes, I did. I, I said, why? Why did you thank him for doing this to you? Made you paralyzed. And, and um, you also thanked him? And, and she said, yeah. I said, what was the reason? And she said, look. She said, had I been normal? Had I walked normally, I have a normal body, normal life. She said, chances are that I would have been out there in the world doing all kinds of, of um, simple things. Doing, uh, I would, she said, there, there, were, there were very big chances that I would not have known the Lord. I would not have any prayer life. I would have been out there in the world doing all kinds of, of um, worldly things. That's why I also thank him for doing this to me. I said, wow, you are an amazing lady. I was so amazed by what he told me. And, and she said, you know, I have so many people 
asking me to pray for them. And I pray for them every day. And she told me, besides, I have this ministry. I said, you have a ministry, huh? And she said, yeah, what kind of ministry? She said, every day I go to the children's unit called the House of Hope, a children's unit in the hospital. And she said, I meet my children there. She, she called them uh, as their, as, as her children. Actually, this unit of the hospital called the House of Hope, uh, their children ages uh, from like newly born children to up to five years old, they are abandoned kids. The, the hospital um, found them, those, those kids in the dumpsters of the hospital or they are left in front of the doors of the hospital and elsewhere. And, and so Minshew said, that's what I do. I, I go up there to the unit called House of Hope. I greet my children. I said, uh, and she said, I, I love them. I uh, hug them and assure them of God's love for them. This, those are my kids. And I said, are you, are you going up there now to the unit? And she said, sure. So I said, can we follow you? She said, yeah, you are welcome to do it. So I said, you know, I thought that lady behind her, I thought she, she um, could see, but I found out um, at that time then that she was blind. And I said, I noticed that uh, Hai, Hai Yun, that was the name of that other lady who was posing her in the wheelchair, I found out that she was blind. I said, she knows where to go. And she said, no, I just tell her where to go. So we followed her up there. And as soon as we were in the unit where the abandoned kids were located, and they were hugging them, they were hugging those children. They were, you know, some of those children were kissing them, hugging them back. And there was love there. I could see the love between those two ladies for their children, for those children, and those children loved them back. They were happy to see them. So as so were these two ladies. They were so happy to see those children as as if they were really their own children. What a what a sight to see. And and then um, you know, we said our goodbyes, and, and I told um, Brother Jim Shen, I said, thank you for, for um, doing this to me. And, and we said our goodbyes. I, I, I um, told uh, Min Siu and, and Hayoon, I said, I hope and pray that someday we will meet again. And, you know, I had tears in my eyes because I believe that I met the Lord in the flesh through these two women. And I told them, I said, how many people who are considered normal are walking on the streets right now, but they are really crippled spiritually and mentally and emotionally. Many people are walking normally, but they don't, most of them, I believe, they don't know the Lord. They don't want to serve the Lord. They don't want to serve uh, their fellow human beings. They're, they're crippled spiritually and mentally and spiritually. So I said, you are doing God's work in spite of your handicap. And I told, I told them, for me, you are, the two of you are the most normal people that I've ever met in my life. The most normal people in the world. That's beautiful. That I've met in my life. You know, and I had tears in my eyes. 
I had tears in my eyes. Can you imagine? Being sealed, she said, she did not only forgive the compunctuous who did that to her, but she thanked him. She thanked him for doing that to her. Can you imagine of, um, of the love that the Lord has for these women? And they really love the Lord. I said, you know, I felt, I, you know, I told them face to face that I really feel so very small in front of them. I feel so very small. I said, you know, I said, you are saints. In my book, you are saints. Because you love the Lord. You are ready to forgive. You are you are serving the Lord, serving God's people, serving those abandoned children. I said, in my book, you are saints. And I was blessed to have met them. She touched me in a very deep way. And I said, I felt so small before that. Okay, so my brothers and sisters, it's a matter of the will. We have to decide first to, to forgive. And you said, some people say, of course it's hard. You know, I, I admit it's hard to do it. But first we have to decide to forgive. And some people say, but Bob, I don't feel like forgiving. Because so-and-so did it to me, I suffered, and all of that. I said, I understand, but you have to decide. It's, it's a decision that you have to make. Feelings will come later. Or, you know, we have to ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, give me the grace to forgive the unforgivable. Give me the grace and help me because I cannot do it on my own. I need your help. I need your grace. I need your power to forgive. But first decide to forgive. Feelings will come later. And you might say, Bob, how can I do it? I said, in my case, I have someone that used to be before I I um, met the Lord, before before the Lord had touched me, I was pretty much in the world. I said, I used to hate uh, this person. And, you know, I could not stand this person. I could not stand this person. Even his shadow, I hate, you know. <laughs> and, and then the Lord touched me. I received a conversion experience that baptized him in the Holy Spirit, touched my life, and I was convicted that, you know, who am I to hate this person? Who am I? So, but it was still hard for me to forgive. You know what I did? Karen, what did you do? I practice. So while I'm, I was by, by myself in my in my room, I visualize him in front of me, and I would say to him, "I forgive you. I forgive you." I practice doing this. You know, Brother Bob. You know, I, said, huh? I did the same thing. Really? Yeah. Yes. You know, I was convicted by the Lord. You know, the Lord says, forgive your enemies. Pray for those who hate you. Pray for those who persecute you. And I said, Lord, and, and I picture him all the time when I, when I did this, when I was practicing. You know, when the Lord was about to die on the cross, he did not curse those uh, Roman soldiers who, who uh, nailed him on the cross, those people who, who uh, beat him or spatted him, you know, and they, they uh, spatted him on his face, you know, and, and did he not curse them? He said, Look, Father in heaven, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Now, if the Lord can forgive those those people who beat him up, who crucified him on the cross. Who am I not to forgive? Who am I? So mm -hmm. then I, I keep on practicing this. I forgive you. I forgive you. Finally, I forgave that person. And, you know, first of all, I, it was hard 
for me to pray for that person. But then when I decided to forgive him, and then I tried to pray for him, because if you pray for that person, for your enemy, and the person that you hated the most, but you, if you decide to forgive that person, see if you can pray for that person from your heart. If you can do it, it means you have already forgiven that person. So I said, Lord, please, you know, at first I said, Lord, please bless this person. But I didn't really mean it at, at first. And then, then as through the constant practice, I said, Lord, bless his socks off. You know? <laughs> really bless him, Lord. Really bless him and his family and his, uh, his finances. And I was sincere in my prayer. Then I realized that I have forgiven the person. So we need the Holy Spirit to do it for us and through us. Lord, help me to forgive. Because it's hard for me to forgive. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not easy to forgive. To to err is human. To forgive is divine. Amen. That's the same. How the same goes. So we have to 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 think about that. You know, it's it's not easy. It it's, it's a process. You we cannot say right away. Oh, I forgive you. No, it's a process. It's a process. We, we have to. to we, we have, have to. to uh, most, most of the time, time, we have to ask the Lord to heal the hurts that that person uh, had caused us. We have to to heal because sometimes, well, most of the time, you know, that that hatred, resentment uh, was the, the the root of that. The root causes would be hurts, hurts. So you ask the Lord first, Lord, heal my hurts, heal my hurts. On the other hand, if you knew that you have hurt somebody else, you you cause someone to suffer, then we should have the heart to go to that person and say to that person, please forgive me. And you have to be sincere. You have to be sincere to do that, do that also. You have to to um to own it. You have to to admit that you made a mistake. And you have to repent that you have you have um, created um, suffering to the other person. And then ask that person, forgive me. You know, ask the Lord to help you do that also. Because as I said, it's not easy also. It's a process. But at first you have to decide. The first step is decide to forgive, decide to ask forgiveness. And feelings will just follow. And ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to do it through you. So sisters and brothers, that's number one on my list. That we have, we have to forgive. We have to take away this, this biggest blockage biggest to, heal, to healing is resentment and forgiveness. Hatred, bitterness. So that's number one on my list. And also we should remember, can you imagine this? And I shared this yesterday during our prayer meeting through Zoom. I said, because, because yesterday's gospel was about forgiveness. And we knew... Um, I believe you went to mass yesterday and that was the gospel to, to forgive. I said, can you imagine if you are now, if you, you know, when you are in heaven and um, one of the things that we're gonna be doing in heaven is to praise the Lord, to praise him, to sing to him, to, we hear, you know, I read something that in, in, in heaven, you know, we have, we always praise the Lord there. We, we we praise the Lord, and I believe we have to. We will sing to the Lord there. And can you imagine? Next to you is the person that you hated, that you have not forgiven. Can you imagine? You will be singing with that person that you hated, and that's for eternity. <laughs> can you, you know? And and supposing the Lord will say. In this mansion, this is where you live, and 
this person that you hated the most in your life, the two of you will be sharing this mansion. And that, that is for eternity. <laughs> so I said, now you better reconcile yourself with that person. Because you'll never know when you go to heaven, if you go to heaven. Huh? This is a big if, if you go to heaven, if without forgiving your enemy. Because the word of God is very clear. He says, if you don't forgive, neither will the Father, will your Father in heaven forgive you. So, supposing my, my sisters and brothers, because of your hatred and unforgiveness, the Lord will say to you, you're going to be in the smoking part of eternity. You know what the smoking part there? There are two, there are two uh, places in eternity that a person would go either smoking or non-smoking. No, smoking or non-smoking. So if, if you go to the smoking section and because of the fact that you didn't forgive, what a shame. The Lord is saying to you, will say to you, I'm sorry, you did not forgive your mother-in-law or your son-in-law or your sister-in-law or your next door neighbor or your co-worker. So therefore, you're going to be going to the smoking section of eternity. <laughs> and, you, and you will be, you'll be smelling like smoke all your life there <laughs> for eternity. Can you imagine that? You know, so do not say I should have listened to Brother Bob. Now I am in the smoking section here, you know, but <laughs> you have to, we have to forgive. Take away all the resentments that you have against your neighbor, against your your um, ex supervisor, against your ex husband or ex wife or uh, ex co worker. We have to really know how to practice forgiveness in order to be in the non-smoking section of eternity. Number two uh, uh, blockage on my list is um, unrepented sin or habitual sin. The Catechism of the Catholic Church defines sin as an offense against reason, truth, and right conscience. It is a failure in genuine love for God and neighbor caused by a perverse attachment to certain goods. St. Augustine defines sin as an utterance, a deed, or a desire contrary to the eternal law. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, St. Paul says, the wages of sin is death. So unrepented and habitual sin is a major block to God's healing a person. In James chapter 5, verse 16, St. James says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The fervent prayer of a righteous person is very powerful. You know, one time Jesus healed a man who had been lame for 38 years, sitting by the pool of Pizzaida. So Jesus healed this man. You know, when, when Jesus approached this man and asked him, um, have you been healed? And he said, oh, he had so many reason he had so many reason oh somebody always um uh come up before me and to be in that pool because in the olden days when that pool beside her was still alive or was still uh, in existence they believed that uh the, the angels would stir up the water in that pool and as soon as the angels would stir up the water you have to be in that water right away 
in order to be healed. But then this lame man, and, and he had been uh, paralyzed for uh, 38 years. He said, no, somebody always come before me. So Jesus says, stand, take up your mat and walk. And this man was healed. He was healed. He was able to walk normally. He was healed. But then one day Jesus saw him in the temple area. And Jesus said to him, look, you are well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse may happen to you. So habitual sin or unrepented sin is one of the biggest blockages to healing also. Another, another example was a lame man who was lowered through the roof in Capernaum. So can you imagine, you know, I could just imagine people there in the temple in Capernaum and um, they, they heard people trying to, to uh, break through the roof using their armor, maybe um, using uh, tools. I didn't have any electrical tools at the time yet, you know, so they probably used hammer and stone, whatever. And then this um, layman was lowered to the roof and Jesus uh, saw this man right away. And he told the man, child, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. So, but sad to say, many in the world today, including Christians have a have a lost, have lost a sense of sin. You know, they have lost a sense of sin. Many people today, sad, sad to say, I'm not saying this in condemnation, but based on observation, many people are have sexual sins and and Sexual sins are very prevalent nowadays, such as what? Such as um, same gender sex, premarital sex, extramarital sex, prostitution, pornography, especially pornography. Many people have been addicted to pornography nowadays. And they said, if it feels good, do it. No more sense of sin. So, by the way, this is a big problem of, of, of pornography nowadays. But the thing is, many people don't realize that uh, when they watch pornography, pornography a, a, a chemical in the brain is being damaged. There's a chemical in the brain that's being damaged. So, um, Brother Bob. And, yes. I think a lot of people today are going to be healed of sexual sin. I had a dream this morning. I think there's going to be yeah. a lot of people that are going to be healed of sexual sin or maybe um, the result of sexual sin, like STDs, yeah, things that are so. causing them pain. It was a very yeah. vivid dream I had this morning. I confirm that. You know, so, like, as I said, um, uh, Pornography, you know, it's very common nowadays because of, um, you know, it's easy because of its easy access. Like teenagers, teenagers are um, mostly addicted to pornography. And there are some adults also addicted to pornography. I read uh, in statistics that 65% of um, men have been addicted to pornography. 65 or 70 percent, actually, it's almost 70 percent of the men. Maybe now it's higher. I, I read this statistics about three years ago. About 68 to 70 percent of the men 
are addicted to pornography. And women, too. You know, there are women who are addicted to pornography also. Right. They said about 35% of the women are addicted to pornography. Maybe it's more now. No, they don't realize that a chemical in the brain is being damaged by watching pornographic materials, pornographic pictures, like the dopamine in the brain. Dopamine, yeah. if a person lacks dopamine, and as I said, they have studies, they have scientific studies that show, that confirms that a chemical called dopamine in the brain is being damaged. Now, dopamine, if a person lacks dopamine, it causes Parkinson's disease. It, it, it causes uh, uh, dementia, you know, or maybe he said that uh, Alzheimer's disease. So we have to be careful with that. They, people should be careful with that. It's not only a sin, sin of lust, but, you know, uh, pornography is, is also being blamed for the rise of, of sexual assaults, rapes, um, it's blamed for um, divorces, you know, it's, it's blamed for broken families because of uh, pornography. You know, we have to, to um, really ask the Lord, if God forbid, if you are, if someone is addicted to pornography, you have to pray, Lord, deliver me from this addiction to pornography because it, it will not only uh, have uh, it, it doesn't only have uh, physical consequences, but also spiritual consequences. You no, know, um, and um, so we have to really pray for for the um, uh, for this pornogra uh, pornography to be eliminated from society because it's blamed for many many problems in society. Amen. It is an attack from the evil one. It is an attack from the evil one. So when you pray your rosary, I I encourage you to ask the Lord, to ask the Mother Mary to er er eradicate the addiction to pornography. Okay? And another blockage to healing is uh, taking the body and the blood of the Lord unworthily. When you receive uh, com communion unworthily, it has some bad consequences. Now, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 to 30, St. Paul says, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will have to answer for the body and the blood of the Lord. A person should examine himself and so eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are ill and infirm and a considerable number are dying. So receiving the body and the blood of Jesus unworthily has some great consequences. So we have to be what under grace when we receive uh, communion. Now, on the other hand, if we receive communion in a worthy manner, it is a great source of healing and restoration and, and grace. The Eucharist, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus are present in the Eucharist. Now, the Catechism of the Catholic Church states that Eucharist is the source and summit of our Christian life. So, if we receive it worthily, my brothers and sisters, it is a source of healing to us. Can you imagine? When you receive his body and blood, soul and divinity are present, and Jesus himself is present inside of you. Now, when I when I receive 
Holy Communion, I spent, you know, a few minutes adoring him and said, Lord, you are now inside my body. And Lord, you know my sickness. If there's any sickness in my body, heal them, Lord. Heal the sickness, Lord. Restore me to health. Because you are now closest to me. Heal me from the top of my head to the tips of my feet. That's all my organs, my systems in my body, all my cells, all my tissues. Oh Lord, all my nerves, my bones, my muscles, everything in me. You know, because it is a source of healing. The best source of healing is the Eucharist, my brothers and sisters. Okay? So we have to be under grace. We have to be under grace when we receive the body and the blood of Jesus. And number five here on the list is that uh, failure to care the body properly. So our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. If we don't take care of our body properly, chances are we get sick. Let's say if we are, we are not getting enough enough uh, rest and sleep, not getting good nutrition, not drinking enough water, not getting proper exercise, and just, you know, imbibing on alcohol. Just, you know, most, most people are, they don't care to take care of their bodies. And I'm a little guilty of that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so God will not answer our prayer if we persist or not correcting this failure on our part. On our part, you know, um, uh, one time there was this man, Karen. Mm -hmm. You know, have you heard of this story before? I'm not. This man was drinking early in the morning. This man was already drinking alcohol. He was in the bar. You know, so, you know, early in the morning, he's already drunk. So he went, he went outside and, you know, he was not walking straight, of course, because he was drunk. Like, you know, these drunk people, the, those drunks, the, the, sometimes the um, take, take um, one step forward and two steps backward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then one day, this man was so drunk, and then there were two priests walking, walking uh, uh, by him, and this, and uh, he said, "Hey, excuse me, excuse me, fathers." And then the, the priest stopped. He says, "Yeah, what happened?" And and he said, "Father, you know what?" He said, "My name is Jesus Christ." And then and then the, these two priests, what? Say, Father, fathers, I am Jesus Christ. I said, What do you mean? Yeah, my name is really Jesus Christ. And he said, and the drunk man says, I can prove that to you. He says, Really? Yeah. So he says, Fathers, come on, follow me, follow me. And the two priests says, Oh, this guy, I'm, I feel sorry for him. He used to be our parishioner, and something really happened to him kind of bad, you know, and feel sorry for this guy. And then the other priest says, well, we better follow him because, you know, we don't want him to to um, um, do something that would scandalize, um, give a big scandal, you know, in the in the street. So we'll just follow him, see what what he wants us to to do. So so they followed him and, and he said, come on, father. Just follow me. I, I am Jesus. My name is Jesus Christ. So, this man went inside the bar, the same bar that he came out of, you know. And 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 the priests were in tow, you know, behind him. And then there was this uh, the bartender. When he looked up, he saw this drunk, and he said, "Jesus Christ, you're drunk again." 
Jesus Christ, you're back again. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> that's why he told the priest that he was Jesus Christ, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. So, anyway, um, yeah, people, they don't care. They don't, uh, they fail to care for their body properly. That's why they get sick. And no matter how you pray for healing, and if you, you know, like someone, you know, one time I was praying over this man who had cancer in the lungs, you know, and and he told me, you know, because he said, because I, I'm a chain smoker and all of this, that's why he said it causes cancer. And so I prayed over him. And then after the service, you know what? I went outside to the church, I saw him smoking cigarettes. Can you imagine? <laughs> no matter. Even if you pray all day long, all night long, and if you don't take care of your body, you know, like this man, you know, after the service, he was smoking cigarettes. How can you be healed? Tell me, how can you be healed? And I, I just shook my head. I said, this man is hopeless. You know, so even though we, you pray all day and all night, I don't think you will get a healing because of that. So because of a person's hard headedness, that person could not get a healing. So failure to take care of the body properly. And another blockage to healing is involvement with occultism. Occultism is defined as something that is mysterious. You know, and in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 10 to 14, the Lord God says, Let there not be a found among you anyone who emulates his son or daughter in the fire, nor a fortune teller, soothsayer, charmer, diviner, or caster of spells, nor one who consults ghosts and spirits or six oracles from the dead. Anyone who does such things is an abomination to the Lord. So, my brothers and sisters, you know, there are cultures, cultures that you will say it's okay to go to fortune tellers, palm readers, you know, it, it's okay to, to seek oracles and all of that. But, um, but it's an abomination to the Lord. The Lord God also says in Leviticus chapter 19, verses 31, verse 31, it says, Do not go to mediums or consult fortune tellers, for you will be defiled by them. Involvement with the cultism is a major hindrance to healing. And as a matter of fact, this will cause one to be in bondage to the evil one. So we have to renounce. Uh, our sins and ask Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of our lives. We don't need to have to um, have a, a fortune teller to tell us what will our future, future be. We only need to trust in the Lord. The Lord, because the Lord God says, I have plans for you. In the book of Jeremiah says, I have plans for you. Plans for you to prosper are not for woe. We just leave our past present and future into the hands of the Almighty God. So, so as a result, involvement with occultism will not only will, will not is not only a hindrance to healing, and it will cause sickness. By the way, it, it, there's a curse that that would that that a person suffers by consulting those uh, people. Who practice occultism. You know, one time, one time, uh, I was praying over this uh, a family. Well, actually, a mother and a daughter. They came to our healing service uh, at St. Luke's. So uh, this, and now let me let me read to you their testimony, okay? 
let me read uh, the uh, testimony to you here about this uh, this lady. This uh, she was a a mother and a daughter. She had cancer. Okay, let me let me read read to you. This is my mother. This is my mother, Carol Carolina. Hello, Karen. Yes, I'm here. You're here. You're there. Okay. Yes. Let me let me read this uh, uh, testimony here. Let me see. Uh, I I lost the page, but let me let me. Okay, it says my mother Carolina who was residing in the Philippines, was diagnosed to have stage 3 colon cancer. My daughter, Micah, who was only one year old, one and one half, one only one year and one month old, was diagnosed with stage 4 liver cancer oh. in March of 2012. I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer in June 2012. My daughter went for an intense chemo regimen and several procedures. She was she also underwent surgeries. One day my coworker told me that her grandma had been attending a mass and healing service at St. Luke's Paris in Stockton and she had been healed of cancer in the name of Jesus Christ. We went to Stockton to attend the Mass and Healing Service in April 2013 at the urging of my co-worker. They prayed over me and my daughter. I stood in as a proxy for my mom. Bob Canton, the leader of the prayer group, told me that he discerned that demonic attacks were causing the cancer of the three of us. He told me not to be afraid because Jesus is our savior and healer. He asked me to tell my mom to renounce the evil one and to always plead the blood of Jesus for protection and to go to confession and receive communion daily and to forgive anyone who offended her. He also asked me to do the same. We did what Brother Bob told us to do right away. We had been coming to St. Luke's not only to attend the Mass and Healing Service monthly, but also to attend the prayer meetings weekly led by Brother Bob. In July 2013, three months after we had been attending the Mass and Healing Service and the prayer meeting, the doctors in the Philippines declared my mom free of cancer. Praise God. Thank God. In August 2013, my doctors in San Francisco told me that all my lab test results are all within normal limits and that I have no more sign of thyroid cancer. We are thanking God every day for these healings. And in June 2014, my daughter was also declared cancer-free. It has been five years since she's been cancer-free, but actually, Actually, in her case, 2013, she was declared cancer-free. That's about, what, seven years ago. Her daughter was declared cancer-free in 2014, so that's been six years ago. God is the answer. God is good. Jesus rescued us from the evil one. He restored us and healed us. Brother Bob, thank you for your prayers. So I discern that their cancers were caused by evil spirits. You know, the, yeah. the evil spirits was was the main cause of their cancers. And they were they were declared cancer free as soon as they renounced it. The uh, the uh, stopped going to the fortune tellers or palm readers or quick quack doctors and they went to confession, they, they go to communion on a regular basis. And praise God, they are healed. They are set free. I discern right away because 
if you um, see this pattern, see, if you see this pattern, pattern and you ask the Lord the cause or causes of this, and there's a pattern there. The three of them are deadly cancers. And as soon as we rebuke, re, rebuke the, the evil spirits of affliction and infirmity and cancer and death, and as soon as we, uh, we ask the Lord to protect them and they renounce their sins, what happened? They were all declared cancer free. Stage four cancer, can you imagine? Her daughter had stage four liver cancer and she had been healed in 2014, so it's been six years now that she has been cancer free, and we praise the Lord. Praise God. And they are going. They are very. They are. They are very um, uh, much into God's word also, and the um, they are very much into the into the, uh, praising the Lord, worshiping the Lord. They go to church on a regular basis and praise the Lord. You know so. Praise so God. that shows that the evil spirits can cause sickness. And they are, and especially if a person goes to practice or goes, if, if, if a person believes in those quack doctors or fortune tellers or, or um, uh, what you call this? Soothsayers? Uh, palm readers and all of that. Hmm. So... We have to be careful with that, okay? Okay. Now, also, one of the blockages to healing also is lack of persistence and perseverance in praying for healing. Sometimes the sick will not get their healings because of lack of perseverance and persistence in prayer. In Luke chapter 18, 18 verse 1, God's word says, Then Jesus told them a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. So we have to we have to not give up easily. We pray and pray. And if we don't receive the, the healing, keep on praying. We have to persevere. We have to just persevere. Jesus himself uh, says the same thing. Jesus said to them, suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, friend, Lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me, that the door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give him the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. So if you didn't, don't get anything from the Lord yet, you know, you don't give up easily. We have, I suggest that we have to use the push method, P-U-S-H. -H. Pray until something happens. And, um, and also, and, and also, we have to um, have knowledge of, of God's words, you know, because lack of knowledge or ignorance of God's words, you know, is one of the blockages to healing. Sometimes we don't receive the Lord's blessing of healing because we don't know what belongs to us and what our inheritance from the Lord is. In Hosea chapter 4, Verses 6 to 7, the Lord God says, my people, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So because of lack of knowledge, he said, God says, my people perish. Since you have rejected knowledge, I will, re I will reject you from my priesthood. Since you have ignored the law of your God, I will also ignore your, your sons. One of one and all, they sin against me, ex exchanging their glory for shame. And in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verses 20 to 22, the Lord God says, My son, to my words, be attentive, 
to my sayings, incline your ears. Let them not slip from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them, bringing health to one's whole being. Now, um, another bracket, and this, this would be the second to the last, Karen. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the next blockage is redemptive suffering. You know, it's not really a blockage, mm -hmm. but this is one of the cause or one of the causes why people don't get healed. Okay. Redemptive suffering is the belief that human suffering will accept it and offered up in union with the passion of Jesus can remit the just punishment for the one's sins or for the sins of another. Now, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1505, states, Moved by so much suffering, Christ not only allows himself to be touched by the sick, but he makes their miseries his own. Quote, unquote, he, no, quote, he, took our infirmities and bore our diseases, unquote. But he did not heal all the sick. His healings were signs of the coming of the kingdom of God. They announced a more radical healing, the victory over sin and death through the passion of Jesus. On the, cr on the cross, Christ took upon himself the whole weight of evil, and took away the sin of the world, of which illness is only a consequence. By his passion and death on the cross, Christ has given a new meaning to suffering. It can be henceforth configure us to him and unite us with his redemptive passion. Now, you know, there are people who don't receive healings or or any type of of um, healing that they are seeking, because the Lord has chosen them to undergo some kind of redemptive suffering, which is beneficial for the salvation of their own soul and or that of another. But but I believe, um, Karen, that only very few people are chosen to undergo redemptive suffering. Only very very few, I believe. You know, because the will of the Lord is for us to be well and to be to be healed. But if a person is chosen uh, to undergo this kind of suffering, redemptive suffering, you know, he will also the Lord will also give this person the strength and the grace to undergo this redemptive suffering. Because you know, uh, the, the the Lord God has chosen him. For a greater purpose, to undergo this redemptive suffering, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1508, we read that the Holy Spirit gives to some a special charism of healing, so as to make manifest the power of the grace of the risen Lord. But even the most intense prayers do not always obtain the healing of all illnesses. Thus, St. Paul must learn from the Lord that my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness, and that the sufferings to be endured can mean that in my flesh I complete what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. So, as I said, if, if a person is chosen to undergo this this redemptive suffering, he will the Lord will also be at his side to give him the grace to undergo to undergo this suffering so that he can go through the suffering unscathed, so to so to speak, you know. And um, so that's why this is some people don't get the healing. Because of that, this is a special gift from the Lord. Special gift. Okay? And then, lastly, in my list, six, God's preeminence and mystery. 
sometimes there is no answer to the question as to why a person did not receive his or her healing. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 28, the Word of God says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. We should remember that the things of God cannot always be explained. You know, Jesus, uh, the Lord God says, My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So the things of God, uh, there are things, many things of God that cannot always be explained. Our job is to just pray for healing and leave the results to the Lord. So we just pray for healing and we leave the results to the Lord. That's why, but, you know, many of, as I said, I have experienced, in, my, in this ministry of healing, preaching, and teaching, I have witnessed people walk from wheelchair, blind people, got healed, deaf, got healed, deaf healed children or, or adults, uh, able to, to hear and speak, you know, tumors disappeared, and, and um, other great healings I have witnessed. But how I wish that, you know, everyone that would attend the healing service will get healed. So at first we have to try our best to remove these blockages to, to healings so that more and more people uh, can receive the healing from the Lord. Amen? Amen. And let us pray right now uh, a general prayer for, for healing. And uh, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We glorify your name. Thank you for this time, Lord, with you. And we believe, Lord, that you are healing people right now because your words, they are spirit and they are life, oh Lord. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will heal people that are watching this podcast, oh Lord, that people will receive restoration, wholeness in your name and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. And Lord, again, touch, touch us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Lord, touch our brain. That's, that's our, our uh, parts of the brain in Jesus' name. Lord, that uh, you renew our, our brain stem, limbic system, lobes, our brain stem, our hippocampus, our prefrontal um, cortex, our amygdala, oh Lord, and all the, the uh, chemicals in the brain to be in balance and in harmony, the physical, chemical, and electrical frequencies in our brain to be in balance and in harmony. Come, Father. Come, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you for healing us in Jesus' name. Any cancer in the brain to be gone completely by the blood of Jesus. We apply by faith the precious blood of Jesus into the bodies of uh, God's children. The precious blood of Jesus the same blood that Jesus shed on the cross in Calvary, in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, we take authority over brain cancer, in Jesus' name. Uh, any abnormal growths, we command the T cells and B cells and NK cells to produce an explosion of immunity system to target and to destroy all the cancerous cells in the brain, all the cancerous cells in the mouth, all the cancerous cells, the multiple um, myeloma in the mouth, in the brain, and in the parts of the body, in Jesus' name, we, we command abnormal uh, growth in the throat, command it to disappear completely by the power of the name and the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. All the cancerous tumor, abnormal growths in the lungs, 
and in the liver and in the kidneys, in the gallbladder, in the uterus, in the breast, in the prostate, and any parts of the body, abnormal growth, we curse them as Jesus cursed the fig tree. We rebuke them and we command them to disappear completely in the mighty name of Jesus. We, we command those uh, abnormal growths to wither and die as Jesus did to the fig tree in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And Lord, deliver us from all addictions, sexual addictions, pornographic addictions, um, addictions to alcohol and drugs, addictions to um, all kinds of, um, of um, things like sexual addictions in Jesus' name by the power of the name and the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask you to, to touch us in a mighty way. Deliver us from the attacks of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of fear, the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of depression, the spirit of heaviness and bondage be gone completely in Jesus' name. Come, Father, come, Jesus, come, Holy Spirit. Lord, that's all, the, all our emotional, mental, physical, spiritual being, Lord. By the power of your name, by the power of your blood, by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, si ambaria, si kalaramba, si and dio. Lord, I live up to you. Lord, the all those people who are suffering from all kinds of debilitating illnesses and sicknesses, such as diabetes, in Jesus' name, we command that um, the, uh, the divine insulin to be installed in their kidneys and protect their eyes, protect their, their feet, protect their bodies from, from the uh, effects of, of diabetes and high sugar in their blood, in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, uh, those who are suffering from, from COVID-19, in Jesus' name, we command the uh, NK cells and T cells and B cells to target the viruses in their body. Command the, the COVID-19 viruses to uh, be gone to be destroyed completely in Jesus' name. And Lord, fortify the, the organs of your children's body, bodies, Lord. Lord, fortify their lungs, their liver, their kidneys, their heart, their brain, Lord, their uh, colon, and uh, the, uh, all the parts of their bodies, the systems in their bodies, in Jesus' name, the blood, the, the gallbladder, the prostate, O oh Lord, and, and all the organs in the body of your people. Si ambaria, si kalaramba, ambaria, si andio. Come, Father, come, Jesus, come, Holy Spirit. And Lord, we renounce the attacks of the enemy. Lord, we renounce all addictions in your name and by your blood, by the power of the Holy Spirit. All the mental, emotional, uh, Lord, uh, physical, spiritual maladies to disappear completely in Jesus' name. Come, Father. Come, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Father. Come, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Glory to your holy name. And I receive a, a word of knowledge that, um, yeah, I... I confirm what you're saying, um, Karen, about uh, sexual, sexual addictions, sexual maladies, like um, uh, addictions to pornography, you know, and, and the Lord is setting people free. And if you have those addictions, I would like for you to repeat this prayer after me. 
Repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus Christ, cover us with your most precious blood. I renounce my addictions, my sexual addictions, pornographic addictions, all addictions, alcohol addictions, drug addictions, uh, food addictions, addictions to to uh, medications, addictions to all kinds of things. I renounce them. Oh Lord, cover, cover me with your most precious blood. Cover me with the power of the Holy Spirit. I reject, I reject Satan. I reject Satan's empty promises and empty words. I reject all Satan's lies. I reject Satan's attacks against my mind, my body, my spirit, my desires. I reject Satan's uh, all kinds of Satan's lies. And Lord Jesus, cover me with your most precious blood. The same blood that you shed on the cross in Calvary. I ask you, Jesus, to deliver me from my addictions right now. Deliver me, Lord. I give you permission to deliver me from these addictions in your name by the power of your precious blood and by the power of the Holy Spirit through the intercession of Mary, my mother. And all the angels in heaven, St. Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill me with your power and presence and grace. And close all the doors in my mind, body, soul, and spirit. Close the doors to addictions in Jesus' name. Come, Holy Spirit, and live within me and empower me and touch me and fill me with your presence, with your love, with your power. Come Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Come Holy Spirit, the advocate. Come Holy Spirit and deliver me now completely and leave no door in my body, in my mind, in my heart and in my spirit. Leave no door to the evil one. In Jesus' name. Hambariya Shikalaramba. Amen. Hambariya Shikalaramba. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Hosanna to your Lord. Praise you, Jesus. You know that you have been delivered by these addictions because you feel like warm, warm on top of your head. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know that you've been delivered by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, Father. Come, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Addictions also to food. Somebody's been healed to addiction to food. Like, as, you know, you have been addicted to food. You could not... Um, uh, stand without eating this food on a daily basis. The Lord is setting you free from that addiction also in Jesus' name. She and Maria, she Kalaramba, and she and Dio. Come, Father, come, Jesus, come, Holy Spirit. Addiction to drugs also. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for healing uh, your children from drug addiction. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Hosanna to you. Thank you, Lord. Addiction to sweets, sweet foods. You know, all sweet, like um, you could not stand without eating sweets every day. You are addicted to sweets, and the Lord is delivering you of that kind of addiction. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And addiction to alcohol also. This person has been fighting against this 
addiction to alcohol. Thank you, Lord. I just say, Lord, thank you for delivering me from this addiction to alcohol. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And somebody has been trying to quit smoking, to quit smoking and say this prayer. Lord Jesus, deliver me from cigarette smoking, from addiction to cigarettes. Oh, Lord, deliver me. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord is delivering people who have addiction to smoking, addiction to cigarette smoking. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hosanna to your holy name. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Thank you for healing us. Praise your holy name. Ambaria si kalaramba. Si ambaria di si andio. Glory to your holy name. By the way, Karen. Yes. Last uh, two weeks ago, I received a word of knowledge of somebody has been healed of sciatica. And I didn't realize that I was one of the those who are healed, by the way. Praise I God. Sciatica pain for a long time. And since that day, no more pain. No wow. More sciatica pain for me. It was, I said, Lord, it was for me then. You know, because I thought it was for somebody else. But it was for me. I'm healed of, of the sciatica pain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. God is and good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And also, someone is uh, being healed of... Um, Insomnia, insomnia also. Thank you, Lord. Come, Father, come, Jesus, come, Holy Spirit. Glory to your holy name. And someone also has, you know, some, not only someone, uh, there are people here, you know, they, they heard about the teaching on forgiveness and hatred, and some of those listeners have decided not to forgive, have decided to forgive those people that have hurt them. And they are even thinking about reaching out to those people who have hurt them. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, that's great that you have decided to forgive. There are people who have decided to forgive those who caused them harm and hurt. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, and some God. Some people also, Karen, yes, have decided to ask forgiveness from their ex wife or ex ex husband also, and their ex friends that they have hurt. They knew that they have hurt them, and instead of just keeping quiet, they have decided to call them or or talk to them and ask forgiveness from them. Great. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Amen. And also healing of, of asthma and allergy. Thank you, Lord. Healings of asthma and allergy. The Lord is healing you of that. Thank you, Lord. And COPD. COPD. And maybe a chain smoker. Chain smokers being healed. As soon as you stop smoking, uh, the COPD is being healed. And Lord, we ask you to deliver this person from COPD and deliver this person from uh, addiction to cigarettes and smoke. Thank you, Lord. From nicotine. Deliver them from the spirit of nicotine, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Addiction to nicotine. In Jesus' name. Ambaria. Sikalarambasiandara. Migraine headaches. There are people here who have been healed of migraine headaches. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. And and you know that because you have you have uh, um, like warmness the behind your the back of your head. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Hosanna to your Lord. Praise your holy name. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hambaria si kalaramba. Si ambaria di si and Hosanna to your Lord. Healings of relationships also. Healings of relationships. Like um, 
uh, there's a uh, uh, feeling uh, between a husband and a wife. You know, you, you have this you, constant arguments, constant fighting, constant bickering. And the Lord is uh, giving you the grace to uh, forgive each other. Thank you, Lord. To, to us, to ask forgiveness and to, you know, you are asking the Lord also to understand your spouse. And he has given you that understanding. He has given you that wisdom. And now you have decided to forgive your spouse. And because of that, there's a healing. There's a healing of relationships. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Hosanna to your Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for that healing. Praise your holy name. I cannot thank you enough, Lord, for healing your children of those maladies, of those uh, emotion, emotional healing, healings of anxieties, and depression also, healing of depression. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords, Hosanna to your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God, glory to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And healing between siblings, healing of relationship between siblings, between brothers and sisters. You know, the Lord is touching your heart and he's telling you to ask forgiveness. He's telling you to pray for your for your brother. He's he's still he's telling you to let go of the hurts. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Hosanna to your Lord. King of kings and Lord of Lords. And also the Lord is healing. Thank you, Jesus. Back pains. Back pains. Also, like in the, uh, you know, the, these back pains have been bothering you, and the Lord is healing you of that. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. And there, there's healings of arthritis, arthritic pain, arthritic pain in the hands and the fingers. Thank you, Jesus. The arthritic pains to be gone completely. Thank you for healing this, O oh Lord, of those arthritic pains. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Hosanna to your Lord. Thank you, Lord. And uh, before we end, I'd like everyone to pray this prayer after me. Okay, uh, it's called uh, Prayer for Anoda. Uh, the healing and keeping prayer. It's on my book. By the way, um, Karen, I have shown this book before the Miracles Never Ending book. It's on Amazon. Do you want, you can, you want me to show it now or do you want me yeah, to show yeah, you can you can show it. Okay, hold on. Um, okay. Amazon.com on the Miracles Never Ending book. And um, that you can think about, okay? Prayers for healing for all types of weaknesses and illnesses. And uh, it also uh, contains my...
power from on high. Awesome power from on high. And uh, unfortunately, it's not on Amazon yet. We are working on it. But if they want to order this book, they can just email to me, send me an email, and I'll send them a copy of the book. Only $15 per copy, one five, fifteen dollars $15, okay? So before we end, I'd like to uh, email, email. Ask, everyone, ask everyone to pray this prayer after me. And um, it's on the, uh, this prayer is actually contained in uh, both uh, books, Miracles Never Ending and Awesome Power from on High. Okay? So, but uh, if you don't have a copy of these books, I would like to, uh, for you right now, to repeat this prayer after me. Okay? Repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for sending your son. I thank you for sending your son. Our Lord Jesus Christ to the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ to the world. To save and to set me free. To save and to set me free. I trust in your power and grace. I trust in your power and grace that sustain and restore me. That sustains and restore me. Loving Father. Loving Father. Touch me now with your healing hands. Touch me now with your healing hands. For I believe that you will. For I believe that you will. Is for me to be well in mind, body, soul, and spirit. For I believe that your will is for me to be well in my body, soul, and spirit. Cover me with the most precious blood. Cover me with your most precious blood. Of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. From the top of my head. From the top of my head. To the soles of my feet. To the soles of my feet. Cast out anything that cast should not be in me. Cast out anything that should not be in me. Root out any unhealthy and abnormal cells. Root out any unhealthy and abnormal cells. And all causes of sickness. And all causes of sickness. From my entire body. From my entire body. Open any blocked arteries or veins. Open any blocked arteries or veins. And rebuild and replenish. And rebuild and replenish. Any damaged areas. Any damaged areas. Remove all inflammation. Remove all inflammation. And cleanse any infection. And cleanse any infection. By the by power of Jesus' precious blood. By the power of Jesus' precious blood. Let the fire of your healing love. Let, let the power of your healing love pass through my entire body pass through my entire body to heal and to make new to heal and to make new any any hold on hold on To make you any diseased areas. Any diseased areas. So that my body will function the way you created it to function. So that my body will function any way you created it to function. Fortify all my organs. Fortify all my organs. All the systems in my body. All the systems in my body. All my arteries. All my arteries. Blood vessels and veins. Blood vessels and veins. All my healthy tissues and cells. All my healthy tissues and cells. All my bones, joints, and ligaments. All my bones, joints, and ligaments. And all my nerves and muscles in my body. All my nerves and muscles in my body. 
by the power of your Holy Spirit. By the power of your Holy Spirit. Touch also my mind and my emotions. Touch also my mind and my emotions. Even the deepest recesses of my heart. Even, even the deepest recesses of my heart. Saturate my entire being. Saturate my entire being. With your presence. With your presence. Love. Love. Joy. Joy. And peace. And peace. And draw me ever closer to you. And draw me ever closer to you. Every moment of my life. Every moment of my life. Moment of my life. And Father. And Father. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And empower me to do your works. And empower me to do your works. So that my life will bring glory. So that my life will bring glory. And honor to your holy name. And honor to your holy name. I ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, Father. Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I would like for you, you know, uh, Karen. Yes. Uh, the Lord is uh, also is speaking into my heart and he said that he's healing people with cancer or any people with abnormal growth. So I would like to ask our listeners or the viewers of this podcast if you have a normal growth or cancer just uh, just lift up your hands now in prayer i know we could not see you and but let me pray over you and that the lord is saying i'm healing i'm healing those people right now lord we live up to you those people who have cancer or abnormal growth in their bodies, cancerous cells in their bodies. In Jesus' name, I curse every seed, every root of those tumors, cancerous cells, abnormal growths in their bodies. I command those cancerous cells to wither and die, to be gone completely. In Jesus' name, I command their, their killer cells, the B cells, the T cells, the NK cells to produce this powerful explosion, powerful blast of that immunity system to destroy all the cancerous cells in their body. Somebody, she calaramba siambari, and she calaramba siambi, and Dios she calaramba. In Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I command that the seed, the root of those abnormal growths to be gone, to disappear completely, to be destroyed by the immunity system of God's people. Shia Kalaramba Siambari, and Leo. And Lord, I apply by faith your precious healing blood, the same blood that you shed on the cross in Calvary. To, to destroy those cancerous cells in Jesus' name. And I speak of restoration. I speak of cleansing. I speak of healing. I speak of miracles. I speak of all great things to come unto them and to, to cleanse the body of your people from cancerous cells, abnormal cells, in Jesus' name. And I command the immunity system to continue to batter those abnormal growths and to to uh, kill them and to destroy them into non-existence in Jesus' name. She kalaramba siambari, and she kalaramba siambi siyadio. Come, Father. Come, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing, and thank you for what you are going to do for your people, for the healing of your people. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And thank you, Lord, and thank you, Jesus. You know, someone has, um, you know, you could feel that um, some kind of abnormal growth um, in your neck area. And also someone has a, 
abdominal growth, like uh, you can feel in your arm, and the Lord is is taking that uh, those abdominal growths out of existence right now. Thank you. Praise Jesus. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Hosanna to you. You are the most high and the holy one. Yes. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for healing your people. Praise your holy name. Amen and amen. amen. Brother amen. Bob. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And also, uh, Karen, um, yeah. someone is being healed uh, lungs. Uh, the, I think it's, it's allergy, asthma, asthma. And the Lord is healing that person with uh, of asthma. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You bring that, that, uh, those people with asthma, and the Lord is fortifying their lungs and the allergen. Lord, touch their body so that they will be immune to allergen, to balance in Jesus' name. Amen. And that, Lord, uh, let this um, allergen will be as far away from them as is the east is from the west and the north is from the south. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Praise Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Brother, Praise brother uh, Bob, yes. can you also yes. extend uh, prayers to the children of the families who are lost right now in, in darkness? and um, just for their protection and for them to come home. And also those people who suffer from so much fear from what's going out right now with the news and the fires and COVID, just to uh, remove that spirit of fear. Yes, Lord, thank you, Lord. Because you said, Lord, in your words, trust in me. And you said, Lord, uh, in, in your words, uh, greater is he who is, greater are you, Lord, who is in us than he who is in the world. Amen. <clears throat> I ask you, Lord, to to um, seek out those lost children in Jesus' name, and Lord, protect them from harm, protect them from from um, evil hands, protect them from evil situations, deliver them with your precious blood. Let your angels. Seek and find them in Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, um, we we know that many people are fearful of these fires and catastrophes, of um, uh, fearful and depressed, and they are anxious. There is high rate of anxiety and and depression because of COVID-19 because of uh, uh, fires and hurricanes in the coast, oh Lord, and, and all these catas catastrophes that are um, affecting your people in this country, we ask you, Lord, to assure them that you are protecting us and you are protecting them. As uh, Lord, we ask that you protect us and cover us with your most precious blood and we rebuke we bind we come against hurricanes we come against fires we come against uh, riotings and lootings we come against violence we come against curses we break all curses excess spells evil wishes evil desires directed against our country directed against the citizens and the people of this country we break them we command them to be null and void, and to be non-existent right now, by the power of the blood, by the power of the name, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Shia kalaramba shia mali, handali and see and heal. Come Father, come Jesus, come Holy Spirit, and we speak of restoration, we speak of healing, we speak of normalcy, we speak of calmness, we speak of progress, we speak of prosperity, we speak of deliverance. Amen. We speak of joy and peace and love. We, we speak of um, healing and restoration and miracles, O oh Lord, upon the entire states of the United States, O oh Lord, all the states in the United States, O oh Lord, and protect us from, from fires and 
earthquakes and hurricanes and man-made catastrophes and natural catastrophes, O oh Lord, by the power of your name, by the power of your blood, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, send your angels and archangels in heaven, St. Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, to blow out of existence this COVID, these COVID viruses, O oh Lord. Blow this out of existence. Let your angels do it in Jesus' name. And Lord, you are you are the, the healer. You are the restorer. You are the source of every good and great things. You are the source of joy and peace and love. You are you are the source of every blessing, Lord. Every great thing. Lord, you are not only God, you are goodness himself. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are not only great, you are greatness yourself. Amen. Lord, you are not only uh, the, 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 the source of peace, but you are the giver of peace. You are the giver of love. You are the giver and protector of us all. You are the savior of the world. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And we praise you, Lord. Who stand at your holy name. Lord, we ask you to protect our president, the vice president, the members of Congress, all the judges, all the civil uh, authorities, the, the police people, Lord, the, the, the policemen, the women, members, uh, all the militaries, oh Lord, all the civil authorities, protect them, guide them, and Lord, empower them to do what is best for your people to do what is of utmost benefits of, for your people in this country, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask that you continue to cover this country, to cover the people of this country with your most precious blood and with your cross. Lord, we exalted the cross. Uh, the cross is the sign of Amen. your victory. Amen. The cross is the sign of, of your victory over the enemy the cross is the sign lord of your vic victory over over death oh. victory over satan oh lord let your cross be exalted yes lord, lord be exalted oh lord to, to to cover this country with your precious blood amen and to uh, be this cross to be the sign of of fortification from you lord Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Trinity, one God. We praise you. We glorify your name. And we live up to you, Karen, and their family members, Lord. Thank protect you. them from harm. Protect them from illnesses. Protect them from attacks of the enemy. Protect them from accident. Protect them from COVID-19. Protect them from any attacks of the enemy. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, only great things will come unto Karen and their loved ones, Amen. and their ministry, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Brother Holy Bob. Trinity, one God. Amen. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise your holy name. Brother Amen. Bob. Brother Bob. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, you know, uh, when you were doing that prayer earlier, I really felt um, that the detaching of spirits from people in a very powerful way and not only were they detached they were thrusted out it was with force praise jesus so That's now right. um the we just have to fill it up with prayers and good works and just uh keeping god in the center so that that hole will not be filled up with with evil again we just fill it up yes. with god so there's no room for it amen thank amen. you so much and Lord, we seal all the things that we said, Lord, for the benefits of your people, for the blessings of your people, for your presence here, mighty presence, mighty protection for our family members and this country. We seal it with the first blood that you shed on the cross and in your name, O oh Lord, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the intercession of Mary, our mother, as, as we consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, as we consecrate ourselves and our family members and our country 
with the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary and through the intercession and protection of Saint Michael, Gabriel and Raphael and all the archangels in heaven and and Lord we claim the victory that you have already won for us on the cross in the name of the Father and the Son and, and the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. And, 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 um, and, and Aaron, yes. you know, the Lord speaking into my heart, he said, there are more healings that he's doing that far greater than we could ever mention or think about, you know, because Praise we can do much, much more than we could ever ask or imagine, imagine. or hope for, according to the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 20. So we claim the Amen. Of Jesus. Amen. We claim our victory. Amen. Uh, victory uh, of uh, good good things and goodness over the, the evil works. Victory of the cross. Yes. Victory of Jesus over all the attacks of the enemy Amen. against us and against our country in general. In, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Thank and you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we ask blessings upon Brother Bob Canton and uh, Robert Canton Ministries, his whole family, all of his loved ones, all of his friends. Put, put a hedge of protection around him always, Lord. And we thank him and you, Lord, for using him in a powerful way. Keep your hand on him all the time. And um, thank you, God, that he's very generous with his time with, for, uh, with us. And we ask him to come back again and again. Amen. So, Brother Bob, amen, when are you coming amen. back? <laughs> Huh? Are you coming back um, uh, two Mondays from now? Yeah, two Mondays from now. Okay. God willing. God willing. Keep on praying for me, okay? Oh, yes, we will. Thank you so much, Brother Bob. God bless you. Thank you for inviting me. And God bless you, Karen. Thank God you. God bless the John Lips Evangelization, Evangelization Ministry. Thank you Amen. so much. Amen. God bless you.